All right, so just coming to a comfortable seat, um, either sitting on the heels or sitting in between the feet. Um, it's really good to have a block maybe in between the feet. Also great if you're sitting on the floor in between the feet or the, a block, just maybe separate the flesh from around your sit bones. Try and create as much space between the sit bones and the crown of the head, as in just elongating through the spine, but just keeping your ribs down, just keeping the natural curves in the spine. Closing off with the eyes. And just interlace your fingers and rest your hands in your lap. Let the shoulders soften, let the arms kind of almost become really heavy just to create some space and opening around the neck and ears. If you're familiar with Ujjayi breath, maybe just establishing that here and now. Creating a bit more space and length through your inhales and exhales. And for today, maybe just see if you can bring a little extra awareness to the exhale. Yeah, that exhale is generally synonymous with that sense of letting go, that sense of feeling grounded, especially when we're maybe up and on our feet or hands in any challenging shapes or movements even though that experience might be challenging physically see if you can uh, redirect that focus to your exhale and find that sense of ease within challenge or within adversity Nice. As you continue to breathe, just go ahead and rest the hands still interlaced on the heart. Let the shoulders and the elbows drop. Just take a couple breaths into your hands. Feel the chest lifting at the top of each inhale, pressing in towards the hands, lifting the hands. And on the exhale, feel the hands just naturally collapse back with the chest. Nice. Make the next inhale the deepest breath in that you can, really filling up the chest. And then on your exhale, flip the hands forwards and extend the arms, pull the chin in towards the chest. I want you to really round through your upper back. You're trying to create like a cave in your chest. You're trying to have the shoulders wrap around forwards or down the arm. Press that through the base of the fingers or through the knuckles. Nice. On your next inhale, reach the arms up overhead. We try and bring the biceps by the ears, draw your lower ribs down, draw the shoulders down. And again, press up through the knuckles. Another deep breath in. Exhale, press out in front of you and round. Chin to the chest, hollow out that chest. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. One more here. Inhale, lift. Exhale, round. Hold this round position. Really, again, hollow out the chest. Press out through the knuckles. Try and have the palms pressing forward. The heels of the hands pressing forward. But the shoulders retracting back. And release the hands. Cool. From here, just catch um, or interlace the fingers behind the back. Squeeze the shoulder blades and pull the hands down towards the floor as you lift the head and the heart. Nice. And then exhale, release. Catch the fingers in front of you and just roll your wrists. Cool. From here, if you're um, on a block, just remove the block. Bring the feet and the knees all the way together so that you're just sitting on your heels. You're going to place your hands just behind your knee line. All 
right? I'm gonna place hands just behind the knee line. So we're gonna press down through the hands and we're gonna to work to keep the feet down and pull the knees up into the chest, right? So screw the hands into the floor, try and wrap or roll the biceps forwards, the creases of the elbows forwards. Press down through the index and ring fingers. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, pull the knees up in towards the chest. Good. Hold it. Press it. Think about the cat stretch or think about the rounding of the shoulder blades that we just did, creating that cave in the chest for the knees. Holding here for five, four, three, two, one. Release it back. Catch the hands behind you. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Lift the heart. And exhale, release, catch the hands in front of you, just roll the wrists. So we're going to do that same thing two more times. But the only difference will be is that we'll lift one foot up with us, yeah, as best you can. So if you find this really challenging, by the way, you can do this with, with two blocks under the hands. So just by elevating the hand, uh, it'll make things a little bit more accessible, especially if you feel tight in the hips or if it feels a lot on the feet. So when you're ready, set up with your blocks or not, hands down just behind the knee line. Again, roll those biceps forwards, take a deep breath in. So we'll keep the left heel glued to the butt, right? The right foot will stay on the floor. Deep breath in, exhale, lift. Good, hold. Keep pressing the right foot down. Keep trying, keep bring, uh, bringing the knees to the same height for five, four, three, two, one, release, sit back, catch the hands behind, interlace the fingers, try and go for a different thumb on top or a different pinky finger at the bottom and release, catch the hands, roll the wrist. Cool, last side, set the hands up, just behind the knee line, so it'll just be the right foot this time. Good, so find that length in the arms before you even lift the knees. So think again of that cat stretch, the rounding through your shoulder blades. And when you're ready on your exhale, go ahead and lift up. Right heel stays to the butt and the left foot presses down. Good, push, try and keep the arms long. Hold here for five, for four, straighten out through the elbows, three, two, and one, release. Cool, sit back, catch the hands. And release, catch the hands in front of you. That's the move that kind of really wakes things up. Let's set the hands out in front of you like you would for a tabletop or plank or down dog. Again, screw the hands in towards the floor. Nice, and then just step straight back into your down dog. Find a bit of movement here at first. Wake up through the backs of the legs. Continue waking up through the backs of the shoulders. And then just coming to a place of stillness in your down dog. Let's press those heels down towards the floor. Good. Think about angling your armpits down to the floor, which is kind of the same motion of trying to wrap your triceps underneath the arms. Nice. On your next inhale, lift the heels up nice and high. Good, and roll forwards to plank. Pull the navel, the belly button in towards the spine. Keep pressing down through the hands just like you were in the previous drill. Good, then bend your knees like you're going to drop them to the floor, but push your hips back. Turn your tailbone up like you're trying to bring the butt to the back of the head, and then straighten your legs. So inhale to plank. Exhale, hover the knees off the floor. Press back as you press down through the toes. Lift the tailbone up. Lift the tailbone, lift the tailbone, lift the tailbone. And then straighten your legs last. Just do that two more times when we come forwards to plank. Bend the knees. Press back. Try and turn the tailbone up. 
Again, like you're trying to bring the butt to the back of the head, press the chest back towards the legs and then straighten. One more time, inhale brings you forwards to plank. Good, drop the knees, press back, lift the tailbone, lift the tailbone, lift the tailbone. Good, and then straighten the legs and hold here in your deepest position with the tailbone lifting up still. All right. So from here, let's take the right leg up. Good. From here, you're going to step the right foot outside your right hand. So it might even be off your mat. Don't be afraid to step off your mat. Press down through the left hand. Inhale, reach the right arm up. Nice. Exhale, right hand down. Shift the weight forward. Step your left foot forward outside your left hand. And then you're going to sink the hips back, reach the arms forward. So we come into like this active squat position. I want you to have your hips quite low. So they're about the height of the knees, maybe just up a little, but more importantly, chest up, shoulders back. Take a deep breath in, knees pressed away from each other. Exhale, stand up straight, palms together. Inhale, reach the arms up, press the hips forward. Exhale, sit back into that same position, that same squat. Good. Think that you're trying to fall back, but your arms, your counterbalance reaching you forwards. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, hands come down to the floor. Step your left foot back. Step your right foot back, downward facing dog. Good. Take the left leg up. Step the left foot outside the left hand. Weight onto the right hand. Inhale, left arm up. Good. Exhale, left hand down. Lean forward. Right foot forward, inhale, come up into that active squat. Hold as you exhale, press the knees away from each other. Take another deep breath in, sink the hips, lift the heart. Exhale, palms together, straighten the legs. Inhale, arms up, hips forwards. Exhale, active squat. Nice, inhale, hold. Exhale, hands down, right foot back, left foot back. Nice. Inhale, plank pose. Good. We're going to lower the body really slowly through a count of five. So make sure the elbow is staying close. We'll start now. Exhale, start to lower five, four. Try and keep the body moving as one unit, two, one. Lightly place the hips down and then lift the legs, lift the belly. Uh, sorry, not the belly, the, uh, the chest. Elbows stay in close. Try and float the hands up by your shoulders, try and contract through your shoulder blades. Try your best to take the thighs off the floor. Good, big breaths into the belly, press the hips down or press the butt down and then exhale, release. Nicely done from here, tuck toes, keep the elbows in. Inhale brings you up to plank. Exhale, drop the knees, pull the hips back. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Cool, one more round through this sequence. Right leg up. Step the right foot outside the right hand. Inhale, right arm lift. Exhale, right hand down. Step the left foot forwards. Inhale, active squat. Exhale, stand straight, palms together. Inhale, arms up, hips forward, look up. Exhale, active squat. Inhale, hold. Exhale, hands down. Step back, left foot. Step back, right foot. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step outside, left hand. Inhale, left arm up. Good. Try and lift the back leg high. Exhale, left hand down. Step the right foot forward. Inhale, active squat. Sit low. Exhale, stand straight, palms together. Inhale, arms up. Press down through the big toes, hips forward. Exhale, come down into that. Active squat. Good. Inhale, hands down. Right foot back. Exhale, left foot back. Good. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, lower the body slowly. Five. Four elbows gripping the side body. Two. One. Hips touch down. Locust pose. Float everything up off the floor. Except the hips. Press down through the hips. Again, try and take the thighs off the floor. Good. Turn the heart open. Good. Exhale, come down, tuck toes. 
Plant the uh, toes, squeeze the knees and the thighs off the floor. Elbows in close, inhale, plank. Exhale, drop the knees, pull the hips back. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, inhale, right leg up. This time, knee to the nose, right down the middle. Bend your left knee also to help you come through. Step the foot by the right thumb. Good, bend your back knee, not quite all the way down, but just off the floor. Inhale, reach the arms up. So you're in like this double bent knee lunge. Good, take another deep breath in. On your exhale, just straighten your back leg. The front leg stays the same. Keep bending in the front knee. Palms together, center of the chest. Keep front leg strong, lean forwards, bent knee, warrior three. Left leg reaching back or left heel pressing back. Left toes pointing down. Good, deep breath in. Exhale, straight in the standing leg. Both legs as straight as you can. Good, bend the right knee again, step the left toes all the way back, keep the hands together, thumbs come to the back of the head. Good, press the head back and then inhale, reach the arms back. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, three-legged dog, right leg up. Good, hold here. So from here, we're going to go from this three-legged dog straight into upward-facing dog. So you're going to lower your forearms as if you're trying to about to take dolphin pose. And then look forward, roll through. And then as you come up, drop the right foot down. Inhale, upward-facing dog. Exhale, downward-facing dog. Nice. Inhale, left leg up. Take your time, knee to the nose, bend your right knee, bend both knees to roll forwards. Try and compress the leg to the torso and step through. Double bent knee lunge as you bend through the back knee, reaching the arms up. Good, shoulders stay down, biceps by the ears. Nice, on your next exhale, straighten the back leg. Palms together, center of the chest, lean forwards. Keep bending in your front leg. Right leg comes up, warrior three. Good, belly reaching forwards, heart reaching forwards. Deep breath in. Exhale, just straight in left leg. Nice, hold. Take a deep breath in. Bend your left knee, step the right toes all the way back, palms together, thumbs to the back of the head. Press the head back, inhale, reach the arms back. Exhale, hands to the floor. Good, inhale, three-legged dog. Left leg comes all the way up. Good, start to bend the elbows, lower the forearms, look forwards, inhale, upward facing dog, pull yourself through. Try and stay as low as you can, good. Exhale, downward facing dog. Cool, from here, inhale the right leg up. Nice, knee to the nose, exhale, step the foot through. Good, bend through the back knee, inhale, double bent knee lunge. Good, exhale, straighten the back leg. Palms together, center of the chest. Inhale, warrior three, lean forwards. Keep the bend in your front leg. Bend even more. Good. And then straighten your standing leg. Good, step the left toes back. Keep the palms together, thumbs to the back of the head. Lift the elbows. Good, and then reach the arms all the way back. Keep bending forwards in the front knee. Good, Byron, press your front knee to the right. Good, and then exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, three-legged dog. Nice. Start to lower the elbows, look forward. Try and bring the chest towards the floor like you're trying to scrape the chest through upward facing dog. Good, exhale, downward facing dog. Last side, left leg up. Knee to the nose. Step through, double bent knee lunge, bending through the back knee, reaching the arms up, inhale. Exhale, straighten the back leg. Palms together, center of the chest. Inhale, warrior three. Keep bending in your standing leg. Good, and then exhale, straighten the left knee. Good, bend the knee again, step back, inhale. Thumbs to the back of the head. Press the head back, arch back, reach the arms back. Trying to turn your belly up to the ceiling. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, three-legged dog. 
Good. Hold here for a moment. So remember, as you come through your up dog, you're trying to bring the chest to kind of touch the floor the whole way through. When you're ready, lower down, bend those elbows, bring the chest through. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good. Take a moment here. Now press the chest back towards the thighs. Press the heels down towards the floor, armpits down towards the floor. Press down through index and ring. Good. Then from here, inhale, right leg up. We'll be warrior two. So step the foot through in between the hands. Drop your back foot and then rise up. Warrior two. I want you to sink into the front knee. So a good way to think about this that I heard recently is, so we always refer to the back foot as the anchor. Usually in our warrior two, and it's one of those poses we come into all the time. But even just from my own experience, it was always this front leg that kind of burns out and kind of takes all of the weight. So we really want to incorporate the back foot and leg as much as we can. So think about what it takes to lift the arch on your back foot to suck this inner left leg away from the floor. So if you think of your back foot as the anchor and the front foot, the right foot is like a, a ship that is kind of anchored down. So the ship is trying to extend back. The anchor is obviously holding it back. Yeah, so think of like equal opposing forces, especially if you're feeling the front leg taking all the weight, even just by reaching your left hand a little further back to shift the weight onto that left leg a little more. Good holding. Breathing. And your front knee, see if you can press it towards the pinky toe rather than collapsing in to the big toe. Good. So from here, left hand comes forwards, left hand comes to the ground. Lift the back heel. We're going to take it into side plank. So turn to the outer edges of both feet. You can even stay here. This is like a kind of like a modified side plank or step the right foot back side plank you can even take a wild thing here if you want to step the right foot behind you but i want you to just really work on lifting the hips up away from the floor in particular the left hip so again suck the left side of the body up away from the floor good press down through the heel of the left hand try and make sure the left hand is underneath the shoulder Nice. From here, slowly, the right foot will make its way back to the front of the mat. Maybe you take a few steps. Maybe you try one slow, controlled movement. Good. Then you're going to drop the back foot. Same legs as warrior two, but the right hand comes inside the right foot for extended side angle. Right hand inside the right foot. Press the right uh, arm or shoulder into the right knee. Good. And then start to reach your left arm forward. And overhead as you start to wind the torso up towards the ceiling. Keep pressing down through the right hand. So we're in extended side angle. Good. You can, of course, take a block under the right hand. Maybe you even just creep the right hand forwards a little. But again, even more so here, we need to anchor down with that left foot because our arms are now reaching overhead as opposed to where we just were in warrior two. So the legs are the same, but how can you engage and incorporate that back foot a little more? Good, either staying here, or if you would like more, the bottom arm reaches out over the head or under the head. Hold here for three, for two. I want you to keep the legs exactly as they are. And then inhale, reverse your warrior. Good, bend the right arm behind the head. Left hand either comes to the right elbow or you can take the full bind behind the back, but I want you to keep pressing into the front knee. Press the knee to the pinky toe and rock back with your side body. Big side stretch, big breath into that right rib cage. Then just straighten your front leg. Level out your arm. Reach forwards with the right arm. Keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching. Right hand down, left arm up. So we're trying to bring the spine parallel to the floor here. Good, try and press your right big toe down. Good. 
Just breathing. Try not to let the head sink so much. Remember the head is the continuation of your spine. So we want the crown of the head just shooting straight out in front. Good, one more breath in as you look up. Exhale, both hands down. Good, lift the back heel. Bend into the front knee. Inhale, take the right leg all the way up. Three-legged dog. On your exhale, right knee, right elbow. Either hold here or you've got the opportunity for that arm balance. If you're able to stack the knee above. Otherwise, just keep elbow to knee. Hold here for three, two, one. Three-legged dog. Downward facing dog. Good. Other side, left leg comes up. Good. Bend both knees, step forwards. Warrior two. So again, set up that whole kind of complex or with that same understanding we have of the legs or the relationship between the legs and the feet in this pose. Outer edge of the right foot really anchoring and pressing and rolling down. Good. So the more we do this, the more kind of lightness we kind of create in the hips and again the less kind of heavy or burdenous it kind of feels on that front leg and knee we we'll draw the ribs in straightening the right knee as best you can and again this being just one of those poses that we come into so often or maybe one we just kind of pass through but what can you do to make this pose count or to bring a different sense of awareness or consciousness to this pose Good, one more breath. From here, right hand sweeps forwards and down to the floor, setting up for side plank. Lift the back heel, turn to the edges of both feet. Good, either stay here or step your left foot back to stack on top of the right, or maybe you bend the knee and step it behind you for wild thing. It doesn't really matter, but just get an idea or sense for pressing down through the right hand. For the right shoulder screwing onto the back, And just, again, sucking the right side body away from the floor. Or if you're in wild thing, if you flip over, then you want to lift both hips up as high away from the floor. Good. From here, slowly the left foot makes its way back to the front of the mat where it just was. You will set up the legs the same once you get there, except you'll drop the left hand inside the left foot. Press down through the left hand. Press the knee to the left with the left shoulder. Good, anchor the back foot before you rise. Start to reach the right arm forwards, forwards, and then churn or feel the spine corkscrewing to the right and up. Good, keep playing the legs. Holding, breathing, trying to create or find that clean line of energy from the right foot all the way up to the right fingertips. If you did on the other side, reach the bottom arm out. Hold for three, two, the legs stay locked exactly the same. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Left arm behind the head, right hand, left elbow, or behind the back. But again, try not to lose that relationship in the legs. Keep bending forwards, big breath, left rib cage. Good, straighten the front leg. Level out your arms. Reach the left hand forward, left hand down. Good. Press the front of the, the two front pelvic bones. Press them forwards out to the side that you're facing. One more breath. Exhale, hands come down. Good, lift the back heel, bend into the front knee. Inhale, three-legged dog. 
Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Either hold and try and pull that knee up towards the armpit or bend the elbows and find your arm balance. EPK2 or Ekapada Kundinyasana 2. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nicely done. Inhale, come forwards to plank. Just going to take one push up. Actually, no, we're going to slowly lower to the floor like we were doing earlier. Exhale, slowly lower. Four, three, two, one. Nice. And then inhale, peel up. Locust pose. Lift the legs. Float the hands by the shoulders as best you can. Try and lift the thighs off the floor. Good. And then from here, reach the hands back. See if you can interlace the fingers. Pull the hands down towards the feet. Lift through the heart. Hold for three, two, and one. Release. Hands by shoulders. Tuck toes. Inhale. Plank pose. Exhale. Drop the knees. Pull the hips back. Look forward. Inhale. Upward facing dog. Try and bring the chest past the hands. And then up. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Good. Just take a small step in with both feet in your down dog. And then I want you to reach your right hand back to your left ankle or calf. And so you're going to pull with the right hand and you're going to push with the left hand. If this is really challenging, then just either step the feet forward or take a block underneath your left hand, the hand that's out in front of you. Good. And maybe take your gaze underneath that left armpit. Really pull and push. And then release and change. So left hand will reach back, right ankle and calf. Good, and release. Normal downward facing dog. And then from here, just slowly step your feet forwards in front of the mat. Have the feet apart and just fold forwards. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, fold forwards. So feet just stay hip width wide. Good. And then just slowly bend both knees, roll up the spine. So with your feet still apart at hip width Y, we're just going to run through uh, what we call like circle chair. So it's more just a movement just to be able to create fluid movement and again to just mobilize the spine. So it's not like an active chair pose. What you'll do is, is you'll bend your knees like you would start to take chair pose. And then from here, you're going to press the knees forward. You're going to just roll up through your spine. Press the hips forwards, press the chest forwards, and then just repeat. So don't worry too much about what you look like or if you're doing it right or wrong. Imagine if you were standing right in front of a glass window or something, and you're just trying to touch the window with every part of the spine as you roll up. Take a couple more rounds. Feet are apart. Now on your next time up, reach the arms up as well. And then exhale, pull the hips back forward. Oh. So maybe just grab what you can. Maybe it's the big toes. Maybe it's just the ankles or the calves. Whatever you do grab, I want you to bend the elbows, lift the head and the heart, pull the tailbone up, exhale, fold. Good, and release. Good, this time bring the feet together. So all the way together. Good. And now coming up for your regular chair pose. Bend the knees, sink the hips, 
pull the tailbone down into that hole, lift up, Utkatasan, chair pose. Good, breathe. Keep pressing both big toes down. Good, palms together, center of the chest, twist to your right, left elbow, right knee. But just be mindful, see what happens with the left knee here. It might, it probably wants to creep forwards. Try and pull the left knee back in line with the right. Inhale, chair pose. Keep the hips low. Exhale, other side. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step your left foot all the way back. Drop the back knee. Good. Reach your right arm forward. And then inhale, big circle up and back. From here, see if you can catch the back foot. If that's not happening, then just... I want you to kick the foot into the ground as strong as you can. Now it might feel a little awkward or maybe even intense on that left hip flexor if you are kicking the floor. But if you've got the hand, I want you to do the same. Just really kick the foot into the hand. Nice, then slowly release. Bring the hands back to frame the right foot. Bend into the front knee. And then exhale to straighten your front leg half split. Pull the hips back and down. And I want you to lightly dig your right heel into the ground and then pull your right hip back. So it's like pulling the right hip back wants to pull the whole leg and foot back. Your right heel is keeping you grounded and anchored down so that you're creating as much space and stretch and lengthening through those two points, the right heel and the right hip. Nice. From here, just step your left hand over your right leg. Just bring a bit of a side stretch into your half split. So the side stretches through the left side. Drop the head down towards the knee. Good. Then bring the hands back where they just were. Bend into the front knee. Right. From here, you're going to, the top of the back foot stays down. So this is going to be different to your normal lunge. We are not tucking the back toes. You're keeping the tops of the toes and the top of that left foot down. And then you're going to do your best to lift your back knee. Now, this might already be really intense on the um, back knee and leg and foot and toes. So maybe just stay here, right? Or if you feel like you can take it further, Maybe you come a little higher, maybe you come all the way up. But again, just work with where you're at. We're going to be here for about five breaths. Tops of the toes stay down. Good, really good. Even if you've got the hands still down, try and bring the chest forward. We're just here for three, for two, and for one, and release. Back knee down. Good, so from here, we're gonna take your variation of full splits. So maybe you can crawl your right foot forward even further. Maybe you just take another half split like what we just took, right? I'll kind of leave it with you. Maybe for you, you can go all the way hips to the ground. But a few things to consider here as well is maybe just bringing a block in for your hands, especially if you'd like to stay a little more upright, you can take your blocks on a high height and just kind of hang out here. Or you can even use a block to just help keep your right leg up. And that might allow you to come even more upright. Or you might have a combination of both that fold forwards. As in still using the blocks, but also coming forward. So again, just a place that you can kind of comfortably or somewhat comfortably, I'm sure there'll be an element of discomfort but again see if you can come back to those exhales to try and find to find the uh, comfort amongst the chaos
Good. And slowly release or slowly bring the right foot back in. Good. From here, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, the hands framing the right foot. Good. So two options here, either standing split or tree pose. So you'll either lift the left leg all the way up. Maybe you even grab the right ankle with the right hand to help pull yourself down. Or you just take tree pose, come standing on that right leg, but bring the left foot inside the right leg. Yeah, two options. Good, we're all pretty much in standing splits to so try and pull or bring the head to the shin and try and drive the left leg up. Good, hold here for three. For two. For one, left foot steps together. Feet together, front of the mat. Nice. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Good. Inhale, chair pose. Good. Lift your heels off the floor. Chair pose on your toes. Keep your knees up, but lower your hips all the way down. Good. Let the knees open wide. We've got opportunity for crow pose, bakasana. Hands come down inside the legs right? Screw the hands into the floor. From here, you're going to try and slide your knees as high up the arms as you can, hopefully towards the triceps or the armpits. Then bend your elbows. Just get a sense of the weight shifting off the feet and onto the hands. And you can do that without actually lifting the feet all the way off the floor. So maybe just play onto coming high on the toes. And then maybe one foot can float and you just work here. Or maybe you have a go of bringing the other foot up as well. And you try and hold here. Good, Xiaomik, really good. Look forwards. Nice, and release. We'll have another chance at that in a moment. But just straighten the legs, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. We'll have another go after the, this last round. So last round, bend the knees, Utkatasan chair pose. Good, palms together, center of the chest. Twist to your left first this time. Good. If you like, you can open the arms here as well. Right knee back. Inhale, chair pose. Keep the hips low. Exhale, other side. And again, left knee back. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. This time the right foot steps all the way back. Drop the back knee down. Reach your left arm forwards. Inhale, big sweep up and back. Go ahead and catch the back foot or kick the floor. Back knee down to the ground, yeah? Good. So that whole kicking action as well is really good prep for that next little um, Chandrasana lunge, that lunge we took with the back foot or the top of the foot down. So you're kind of getting the same sense of kicking the foot either into the hand or into the floor. Nice, slowly release, bring the hands back by the left foot. So first we'll take the half split to reach the chest forwards and then exhale, just straighten your front leg. Remember, dig the left heel into the ground, pull the left hip back. And step the right hand over the leg and come into that side stretch on the right side. So bring the hands back to frame the front foot, bend into the front knee. Good. So here comes that lunge, top of the right foot, back and down. Lift the back knee. Good. Either stay and again, just work with where you're at or come up. And it might be completely different on this side. Maybe this side you can come all the way up, but on the other side, it was quite challenging. Good. Just hold, breathe. Good. Holding for five. We grow tall for four. 
For three, lift the lower belly up. For two, keep bending front knee. And on one, release. Good, drop the back knee and then full splits. However, you took it on the other side. Again, could be different, but just walk your left foot forward. Bring the blocks in if you need. And again, either you can stay upright to really get that nice stretch in the hip flexor, or you can come forwards to get a bit more opening through the back of the left leg. Good, and slowly release. So left foot comes back just so it's in between the hands. So we're gonna get set for standing split. So go ahead, lift the back knee. Good, keep the bend in the front knee. And then just lean your weight forward like you would for warrior three. Try and keep the belly and the left thigh connected as you try and fold over the left leg and drive the left heel up. Nice feet come together in front of the mat. So here's that chance for crow pose. Bend the knees, chair pose first. Sink low, press the big toes down. Good, lift the heels. Keep the knees up, lower the butt. Knees come wide, hands screw into the floor. Good, stay high on your toes, right? Because that'll help you bring the knees even higher. High on the toes and then slide the knees up, slide the knees up, stay high on the toe. Keep lifting, keep lifting. We try and create that shelf for the knees. Bend your elbows, bend your elbows, look forwards, and then just have a go, maybe one foot. Hold here for five. Press through the palms. Cool, nice work. And from here, take one last chair pose. And then forward fold. Good, grab a hold of what you can. You might even want to slide the hands underneath the feet, part of Hastasana, or just again, grab the ankles or the big toes. Inhale, halfway lift, start to pull the elbows wide. And then exhale, start to pull yourself down. Cool, release. Good, from here, hands down, step both feet back for plank. We'll just take one last vinyasa flow. Good, so shoulders over hands, roll the biceps forwards. Exhale for five, lowering slowly. See if you can time it for four, three, two. You're gonna lightly place the hips down and lift everything else up. Float the hands by the shoulders, locust pose. Good, then bend both knees. Reach back, try and catch the ankles. Maybe even like the bottoms of the shins. Or just wherever you can, really. Good, start to kick back. Good, start to lift the knees, start to lift the thigh. Again, crank the chest open. Holds for five. Keep kicking for four, pressing the shins back. For three, press the hips and the butt down and release. Hands by the shoulders, tuck toes. Inhale, plank pose. Drop knees, pull hips back. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice, drop the knees, 
Drop the hips to one side, legs come out in front of you. Let's give the legs a bit of a shake. Good, and then just make your way onto your back. So we're just gonna take one round of bridge. And so for that bridge, that could be supported bridge with the block underneath your hip. Could be an active bridge just without the block, or it could even be a full wheel Urdhva Dhanurasana, yeah? So I'll leave it with you. If you feel like it's pretty much just time to restore and wind down, then go ahead, take supported bridge on the block. Otherwise, press your feet down, press your hands, your palms down, squeeze the butt, lift the hips. Good, keep rolling the shoulders down and underneath you. If you like, take the hands by the ears and press up for wheel or just hang out here. Wherever you are, I just want you to take five full breaths. Good, nice work, Xiaomi. Think knees forwards, knees forwards. Good. And then slowly release. Good, pull the knees into the chest. Good, give yourselves a hug. Nice work. And release the feet, same position like you would for bridge, but this time just take the right ankle on your left knee. All right, and then walk the left foot towards you and then eventually just interlace the fingers either behind the left knee or at the front of the left knee. And just see if you can maybe, if you can use your right elbow or arm to gently press your right knee away or just use your right knee itself to just press away. And any kind of movement here might also be nice or always encouraged. Nice. Now keep the legs as they are. Pull the knees in towards you. Take your arms out wide. Try and bring the legs as close to the chest as you can. Arms wide. And then turn the feet to the left or the legs to the left. Drop the head to the right. And slowly unwind and just change right foot down, left ankle, right knee. Pull the legs or the knees in, interlace the fingers. Keep the legs, slowly lower the right foot down. Oh, sorry, not down, but pull the legs in towards your chest, arms wide, and then legs to the right, head to the left.
So we'll slowly come back up. Bring both knees together. Give yourselves a big hug. Pull the head up towards the knees. Try and contract every muscle you have. And then on an exhale, come into your Shavasana. Let the feet come to the corners of the mat. Let the palms roll up. Let the shoulders sink and soften. Let the face soften. Let the jaw soften, your lips, teeth, ears, nose, nostrils, cheekbones. Eyelids, eyeballs, eyebrows, all softening. The temples and the third eye center or the forehead completely relaxed. Just starting to drift back. If you'd like to just hang out and just maybe take another 10, 20 minutes on your back or just hang out to breathe or meditate, by all means, feel free. 
If you're ready to move around or resurface, just take a moment to roll over onto your side. And when you're ready, just starting to pick yourself up and try and bring all that good stuff from your practice or from your Shavasana or anything else you might have learned. Try and pick that up and keep it moving forward with you. As you sit up nice and tall, just bring the palms together, center of the chest. Take an exhale out. Take a nice deep breath in. Really fill up the chest. Hold the breath in, relax everything else. Then open the mouth, exhale, let it go. Nice, well done everyone, namaste.